Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here and welcome to a new episode. As you can see, I am not in my workshop right now. We are preparing to move just down the road a little ways. So my workshop is not usable at this moment, so I hope you'll forgive me for the change of venue. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to continue with some more sci-fi terrain. I've been playing Stargrave and uh, I've managed to get a solo game under my belt and really enjoyed that. Um, I also uh, have been playing Core Space again, and I'm hoping to film some of those games and share them with you at a later time. But let's get to the tabletop because I want to show you how I made this. For lack of a better term, I'm calling this a, um, a medical pod. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. It could be a prison, but it's a small clear container. As you can see, I've got a little robot in there. And um, this can be made uh, with, this is a plastic bottle. Uh, I got a two-pack of them from, I can't remember whether it was Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but it was a two-pack for just a couple dollars, I think. It's a plastic bottle, comes with a lid right there, and uh, the rest of it is laser cut, but you can totally make this with uh, chipboard or foam, and in the description below, I'm going to include a, a PDF that has the, um, the sizes that I've used, just in case you can find these two-pack of bottles at your own store. Let's get to the tabletop and I'll show you how I designed this and made it. I began this project by going into Inkscape and drawing the shapes that I would need to create this, uh, this storage pod or medical pod. You can do this in foam or chipboard. I just wanted it done in wood so I would use my laser cutter. But if you don't have a laser cutter, again, you can do this in foam or chipboard. And I'm going to make a copy available of my shapes. Um, as a download in the description below. So definitely check down there. You can, uh, you can get the dimensions and things I used. The reason I used the laser cutter is, as you can see here, I was able to add details. Now, I painted the wood silver before I put it in the laser cutter, and I cover it with this protective tape that prevents burning. So you won't see the silver uh, in, the, in a video just in a, in a moment. You'll see the, the laser doing the cutting. You won't see the silver. It's underneath the tape. But what the tape does is it cuts away uh, with the laser and leaves this detail behind. So there will be these lines that I'm drawing here in Inkscape. These will actually be visible as like engravings or etchings on the surface of the pieces. Now I created three bases that when stacked, uh, these are all about one quarter inch thick wood. So when they're stacked up, they will cover the um, screw on top of the, uh, of the bottle and hide it. Uh, leaving only the clear part of the bottle visible. Now, what I'm doing here is just adding some details. I use the align tools a lot to add uh, squares and funny shapes. And you center everything, and then you to keep from re redoing your work, you can make copies and then rotate it and, and at 45 degree increments and things like that. So really what you're seeing me here do is create one instance of something, and then I make a copy and I rotate it. Uh, around the circle just to give it that extra bit of detail. Now, only the top piece that I'm working on right here will have the detail. The two below it, they really don't have anything, so I didn't spend any time uh, giving them any detail. But I also added detail to the top that will be glued onto the top of the glass bottle. Now, remember, the, the plastic bottle, excuse me, is going to be upside down with the top pointed down. So I needed to cover, uh, cover the top of it, and I created another piece that has uh, some additional um, detail work uh, on it. Now in just a moment, you're going to see my laser cutter at work. It looks like it's cutting fast, but I've sped up the video to four times the speed. Uh, the entire thing took about four minutes.
Okay, there you go. It breaks down into two pieces. As you can see, this is the base. It's three levels. Uh, this is quarter inch wood, so it took three stacks to cover this blue bottle cap. Well, it was white. I painted it. Um, I added these detail pieces around here and on the top, just a little extra. You don't have to do that. Now, if you don't have a laser cutter, again, you could totally make this out of chipboard or foam. Uh, it's just where I laser etched the details. Okay, you would have to use like chipboard or some sort of you know thin paper or plastic, cut it out and, and make those shapes so you get that 3D looking effect. The bottle uh, is plastic. It was a two pack uh, at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I honestly can't remember. Um, I glued a metal cap in the bottom here. Uh, I have the figure attached with a piece of tape because this has not got a magnet on it. But if you had a magnet on a mini, it would just attach to the, to the cap here and then you would just screw it in to hold it in place. Now, one interesting thing you could do with this, I, I'm not going to, but you could, is you could fill it with water and maybe put a drop or two of uh, acrylic paint, whatever color you want, red, blue, green, whatever, shake it up and get it mixed real good. And uh, you would have some sort of aquatic tank that holds, you know, some creature. Now, keep in mind, that might stain a mini that you put in there. I, I can't tell you yes or no whether that would happen. But uh, if it was going to be a permanent cut thing, who cares? Uh, you would probably just want to use hot glue around the threads of the bottle here so that when you turn it and, and screw it on, it, it gets a good seal all the way around and won't leak. But... Um, but there you go. One nice little sci-fi uh, display. Um, I'm calling it a stasis chamber right now. Uh, got a little robot in there. But um, totally, totally doable by you with uh, chipboard, foam, whatever you have on hand. All right, that's all I have for this week. I would like to uh, invite you to come join us over at the Tabletop Crafters Guild Facebook group. I'm one of the guild masters there, and it's a 35,000 plus strong group of crafters and gamers who make crafts for their games. Maybe we game because we like to craft. I don't know. It's people who share photos, ask questions, uh, look for inspiration uh, for things that they want to make to enhance their tabletop game. Now, I also have my own Facebook group called the Tabletop Engineer uh, Facebook group. And uh, over there, I do on Thursdays, I do a live show and tell on the Facebook group page. And um, usually Thursday morning, I post the time that I will do it that day because it can change from day from week to week depending on my kids' schedule and my schedule and things like that. On Fridays, I've been doing a uh, live event called Paint a Pair of Minis, where I paint a pair of minis, and um, I do that on Zoom. And also, uh, on the Facebook group, I post the link to the Zoom and the password and the time. And basically, it's your opportunity to come join in, and we chat live, uh, and we paint and we show each other what we're doing and uh, we have a good time and it's been growing. Uh, last uh, week I had four, four people show up uh, and we painted and painted and painted and had a good old time, talked a lot, quite a bit. But you can only uh, get that information if you come join me over at the Tabletop Engineer Facebook group. That is it for this week. I hope you liked the video. I'll be back next week with another crafting video. Until then, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Take care. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing.